Hello viewers, it is a brand new month and we at Raxio Data Center are super excited to start it off on a high note. Happy new month and welcome back to Raxio Hour. This week we featured Ronald Azaire, the Managing Director at Pegasus Technologies Limited. Pegasus Technologies Limited was incorporated in 2007 and has since then rapidly grown. Pegasus Technologies Limited has over the years gained massive experience in the development of financial solutions for companies such as banks, telecoms and utilities in Uganda with bespoke financial and billing solutions. Pegasus Technologies Limited holds Level 1 and Level 2 certifications from the National Information Technology Authority Uganda NITAU, as well as the Payments Card Industry Data Security Standard PCI DSS certificate. On recently acquiring the payment service operator PSO license from the Bank of Uganda, we asked Ronald Azaire what such a milestone represents for Pegasus Technologies and how fintechs in general can thrive in the digital space. Ronald Azaire is an energetic and enthusiastic computer scientist and computer security expert with many years of experience and a wealth of knowledge. Let us hear what he had to say. My name is Ronald Azaire. I'm the managing director at Pegasus Technologies. Pegasus Technologies was incorporated in 2007 with the vision of digitizing uh, digital pay, uh, payments, removing cash from payments and allowing people to use the contemporary applications or media that was available at the time to complete payments. Now you recall that 2007 was before the advent of mobile money. So when we speak about digitizing payments at the time, the question was how can we allow people to use bank platforms that were available at the time to complete payments either for tax payments or for utility payments and all of this was supposed to happen in real time. When I talk about real time, I'm saying one should have been able to go to a bank and pay their money and at the same time have their account at National Water or at Umeme credited in real time. Following the advent of mobile money a couple of years later, we allowed to take what we had implemented in banks at the time to the mobile money platform to allow people, remember that at the advent of mobile money, the only use case for mobile money was what we refer now to as P2P, that is to say one person sending money to another. But it quickly became apparent that we could use that, we could leverage that ability to allow people to send money not just to their to individuals, but to send money to institutions. And if you can send money, money to institutions, then technically you can pay for your bill uh, at these institutions. So we allowed people, we developed what we call the first bill payments API. A bill payments API was supposed to be an interface between the platform owners, who are in this case were either banks or telecoms, and the utility houses like National Water and Women. So that API was to allow a person interacting with the digital platforms that banks and telecoms offered to complete payments uh, to the utilities and get a service in real time. If it was National Water to have their water account created in real time, if it was Umeme to buy a token and receive it in real time. And of course this relies on so many technologies. First and foremost it's the actual platform uh, that handles the digital payment. In this case for mobile money, they are mobile money platform or for banks they are digital platforms um, or mobile platforms as the case may be. But it also says what does the customer interact with? What are the channels through which this customer can interact with these platforms? So there was a concept of USSD. How can someone dial a short code and that short code delivers a menu through which they can then select who they want to pay, what their reference number is and so on. And then at the completion of all of that, can these people receive a digital stamp or digital um, receipt, which was the SMS. So in a sense, all of those technologies come together to complete what we call a digital uh, platform. Uh, recently, of course, following the, um, the passing of the National Payment Systems Act uh, in 2020, and subsequently the release of the National Payments Regulations in 2021 were mandated uh, by law uh, to be licensed by the central bank. And for us, that was a very good thing because up to this place, up to this point, we played in a space that was completely unregulated. That also has its benefits. However, 
the benefits of regulation are that now the customers have confidence in the system they are dealing with and in the institutions they are dealing with. So we're very excited about regulation. And of course, we applied and having gone through the rigors uh, of the central bank and all the requirements, we are happy to say that we are one of the people that have so far uh, been licensed uh, to do to, as a payment service operator to do this. And what does that mean for us, first as an institution, but also for our customers? For us as an institution, it's a shift from your typical startup uh, to a more structured operation because that's, those are some of the requirements of the central bank, that your operation must be more structured, your reporting must be better, um, your governance must be sound, your capitalization must be good. So for us as an institution, even though we had most of those things in place, now they have become more institutionalized in the way we do our operations. And what does that mean for our customers? For our customers, of course, it's our commitment to them that we aim to make sure we are number one, following the rules um, as they're stipulated, but number two, to give them the confidence that now the operation or the person they are interacting with is under the oversight of an institution uh, as reputed as the central bank. And that should give them not just the confidence but the reliability uh, that will be around, not just now but for a very long time. So that is what it means for us. Of course it also gives us room now to innovate uh, within the boundaries that set out, to innovate new products, uh, to do uh, things we couldn't previously do, um, for the platform owners like banks and telecoms, it should also give them the understanding that we are now under the watch of the central bank and therefore everything we do in our space is legal and is under the oversight of someone. The journey and the trajectory we've taken um, right from being a startup to where we are now, and I would almost say we are now a mature company, um, it's, it's not been without its thorns. It's been a very thorny path and um, some of the biggest um, challenges we've had, and they are not few, um, are, are, are in all spheres in things like legislation. You remember that a couple of years ago, a piece of legislation was passed that imposed tax on mobile money, which largely affected the operations of, of technology, uh, financial technology operations. And I say this because we saw people preferring to go back to cash, which threatened to reverse all the trends that we, we, we had made in trying to digitize payments. Now everyone suddenly was afraid of the tax. Uh, we saw tax on, uh, on over-the-top transactions, what they call OTT, that also seemed to do that. So one of the challenges we've had is legislation that sometimes does not favor uh, the trend that we are, we are uh, trying to, to get. Um, along with that, of course, is some, sometimes it's low literacy levels. How do you develop a piece of application that anyone, regardless of their level of education, is able to interact with. Of course, the medium largely of, of, of all our uh, technology is English. How do we take that, for example, and put it in local languages? Those are some of the challenges we've faced. The low level of uh, penetration of, of smart technologies like phones. Um, we did a study about three years ago and we found that in the rural areas, the proliferation of smartphones was just at 6%. I'm told now it's about 12%, but that's still very low for a, a, a growth that we are projecting. If we want to put everyone into the financial inclusion and, and, and digitized payments, then we need to see uh, a bigger proliferation of mobile phones, deeper penetration uh, of mobile technologies. Luckily for us, We've had high literacy levels, literacy levels are increasing, so people are becoming aware of this exposure has also helped us. The low cost of internet that's coming down uh, is also good. Um, so there have been challenges, there have been uh, good things. The other option, the other threat of course is, is, um, is thieves, Thief, uh, people that take advantage of these uh, digital payments to defraud others. Um, they steal people's pins and use those to, to make transactions. They, they do what they call SIM, uh, SIM card um, uh, swapping. They, so there, there are so many things that they do that threaten um, the confidence. And what these do is that they, they are not so much a threat to the operations of the fintech in as much as they kill the morale 
and the enthusiasm of the users of some of these systems. If someone loses money today in a digital transaction, there's every chance they won't want to do it again. So they will default back to cash. So those are some of the challenges uh, that we've faced. We know that social media is catching on. We have the advantage of a very youthful population who are given over to things like social media. And we're thinking if we can expand social media and attach it to or fuse it with digital payments, then we have a very big catchment place for, for very many people uh, to, to do digital payments. So our vision is to try and do that, to make sure that we completely remove uh, cash from the economy and allow people to do digital transactions. I think one of the, the benefits that people see in cash is that it's reliable. If I have cash and I walk to a supermarket, I'll buy a loaf of bread and pay cash and go. You don't want to get people used to a system that won't be available tomorrow. So what we are saying to them is we can offer you platforms that are as reliable as your cash payments. And that is the reason we are partnering with people like, like Raxio to say, can you give us platforms or can we have partner with you to put up platforms that will guarantee the people using our systems that our systems have continuity, they will be available when you need them, they have the security they need, and they will be available to you all the time. So the future of fintechs for me is to become that reliable partner that does innovations on top of the platforms owned by the platform owners. When I talk about platform owners, I'm talking about banks, I'm talking about telecom companies. So we will not compete with them in developing uh, platforms, but we will build innovation on top of that platform that will give both of us the ability to digitize all payments. For example, people are still paying rent by going to the bank over the counter and paying rent or giving cash directly to, uh, to their landlords. Why don't we digitize that? Why don't we have a rent management system that allows landlords, no matter the number of properties, to be able to collect their money digitally, to be able to tell the people that uh, owe them money to, to give them reminders, for example, and so on. In churches, can we digitize offertory? Can we digitize all of these things? And in mosques, can we digitize all payments? And this is where innovation comes in. Is there a way as fintechs we can take that and make it available to the platform owners by building innovation over that and therefore allow convenience to all users to finally remove cash from the economy and have everyone have enjoy the, 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 the beauty of digital payments. And what's the beauty of digital payments? The fact that you can pay anytime, the fact that you can pay anywhere, and ultimately the fact that there is, unlike a, 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 a cash transaction, there is always a digital trend or a thread through everything that you do digitally and it can be tracked uh, everywhere. So those are some of the benefits uh, of fintechs. And for me, the future of fintech is to see a complete fusion between social media and mobile payments fused together to allow the person the freedom to say, while I'm chatting, I can also use this opportunity to pay for my water bill, my electricity bill and my DSTV and send money to my friend. Thank you for tuning in to Axio Hour. Have a wonderful weekend ahead.